From sunrise to sunset, these brave individuals oversee every aspect of aircraft operations, ensuring the safety and efficiency of each takeoff and landing. Have you ever wondered what it's like to command the skies from the heart of a modern aircraft carrier? Today, as we dive deep into the captivating world of the Captain Jack Sparrow of modern aircraft carriers, the Air Boss. From overseeing aircraft operations to managing the flight deck, this high stakes role requires absolute precision, leadership, and a passion for excellence. Join us as we uncover the captivating challenges, remarkable responsibilities, and amazing teamwork that an Airboss is required to run the aircraft carrier. So let's get started. The Airboss. From the busy hangar deck to the exciting flight deck, and even the aircraft in flight, the Airboss, along with their trusted assistant, the Mini Boss, oversees it all. Imagine the center of the primary flight control, also known as the tower, where the Airboss and Mini Boss maintain constant visual control over all aircraft within the carrier control zone. This extends from the surface of the sea to an impressive altitude of 2,500 feet and is marked by a circular boundary with a radius of five nautical miles from the carrier's location. Usually, the Airboss is an experienced commander who is often on the verge of becoming a captain. Wearing a distinctive working jersey, often in bright yellow, the Airboss represents the dedicated personnel on the flight deck, in the hangar bay, and in aviation fuels. However, this authoritative figure has the freedom to choose any jersey color, which shows their connection to everyone involved in carrier operations. But the Airboss's responsibilities go beyond these areas. They have the critical task of maintaining visual control over all active aircraft within the control zone especially in certain conditions. Additionally, their authority can extend beyond the control zone to cover any aircraft operating on the air officer's control frequency. The control zone. The air boss holds the power to give the green light for entering the control zone. Before anyone can start their operations, they must obtain the air boss's consent. This clearance involves crucial information such as instructions to avoid other aircraft, details about potential hazards, and specific altitude and distance limitations for safe operation. When it comes to helicopter units embarking on shipboard missions, they need to be certified by their respective unit commanders or other authorities. This certification confirms that the unit has completed all the necessary training required by its parent service to prepare for the mission. Before the operations begin, the officer in charge of the unit will send diagrams of the embarked aircraft to both the air officer and the crash and salvage parties upon their request. In situations where the air department on the ship hasn't worked with the training aircraft for a while or there is newly assigned personnel, the aircraft will be landed and shut down on the flight deck at the start of training. This allows for a comprehensive walk around of the aircraft to take place. During this walk around, the aircraft's emergency equipment, including fuel ports, fire bottles, release handles, and other crucial items, will be examined. It's an essential step to familiarize the aircraft handlers, fire and rescue personnel, and everyone involved with the emergency equipment's location and operation. Arming The Airboss is also in charge of arming the aircraft. It involves equipping them with weapons, and this exciting task takes place in a specifically designated area for utmost safety. When it comes to forward firing weapons, and if the store's loading checklists require it, the area in front of the aircraft will be cleared and kept clear until the arming process is completed. But hold on, arming doesn't happen right away. It's a step that takes place once the aircraft has come to a complete stop and the control of the aircraft has been handed over to a supervisor from the army crew. The crew members must follow predetermined arming signals that have already been established to ensure a smooth and efficient process. Once the pilot indicates readiness for takeoff and the tie-down chains and chocks have been removed, the Airboss takes charge. To ensure maximum safety, the Airboss will formalize evacuation paths for each type of aircraft. These paths provide the arming crew members with the safest working environment possible. 
It's all about ensuring that everyone involved is aware of the proper procedures and can work in a secure environment. With the Air Boss at the helm, the arming process becomes a well-coordinated and thrilling endeavor. It's a crucial step in preparing the aircraft for their missions, ensuring they are armed and ready to take on any challenges that lie ahead, working with other officers. While the Air Boss plays a crucial role, there are other officers who work closely with them on a daily basis. Let's explore these officers and their thrilling responsibilities. First up, we have the Catapult Officers, also known as Shooters. These officers, who are commissioned officers themselves, oversee all aspects of catapult maintenance and operation. They ensure that the deck has sufficient wind blowing in the right direction and at the perfect speed. Additionally, they make precise adjustments to the steam settings on the catapults to provide the aircraft with enough speed to take off smoothly once released. Now meet the aircraft directors, an essential group of individuals who keep the flight decks and hangars of an aircraft carrier buzzing with coordinated movement. These individuals are commonly known as bears, and those working in the hangar are playfully called hangar rats. Additionally, commissioned officers with the job title flight deck officer also play a vital role in directing planes during flight operations. When you step onto the flight deck, you'll notice a team of 12 to 15 yellow-shirted individuals known as yellow shirts. They report directly to the handler, the master orchestrator of the flight deck. While aviation directors can also be found at land airports, their presence and purpose on the ship's flight deck are of utmost importance. Picture a tight, dynamic environment where aircraft taxi within inches of each other, while the ship rocks and pitches beneath them. The Airboss also teams up with the Extraordinary Landing Signal Officer, also known as the LSO. The LSO is a highly skilled and seasoned pilot with a crucial responsibility overseeing the visual control of aircraft during the critical final phase of their approach right before they touch down. Imagine the intense moment as the aircraft nears the carrier for landing. It's the LSO who takes charge, ensuring that the approaching aircraft is in the correct configuration for a safe touchdown. With eagle eyes, they carefully monitor the aircraft's glide path angle, altitude, and lineup. Every detail is meticulously scrutinized to ensure a flawless landing. To communicate with the pilots, the LSO employs a variety of methods. Voice radio transmissions, light signals, and vocal cues come together as the primary modes of communication. With precision and clarity, the LSO guides the pilots, providing essential instructions and feedback during these crucial moments. And let's not forget the thrilling role of the arresting gear officer. This officer holds the key to the functioning of the arresting gear a crucial system for safely landing aircraft on the carrier's deck. Depending on the type of aircraft approaching, the arresting gear officer must make adjustments accordingly. They carefully calibrate the arresting gear engines to provide just the right amount of resistance, also known as the weight setting, to the arresting cord. This ensures a smooth and controlled landing for the aircraft, allowing it to come to a safe stop. Working hand-in-hand -hand with the air boss and other officers, the arresting gear officer plays a vital role in ensuring seamless operations on the flight deck. Their expertise and meticulous attention to detail contribute to the overall safety and success of every landing. Together, this team of dedicated professionals orchestrates a mesmerizing ballet of takeoffs and landings, where precision and coordination reign supreme. Like and subscribe and comment down below if you think the Air Boss is the most crucial role on an aircraft carrier. Working on an aircraft carrier can be dangerous. Do you know what happens when a US soldier loses their life on an aircraft carrier? And have you ever wondered how the burial happens at sea? To find out, click on this video right here. That would be all for this video, but click this video to find out more about the noble departure of a fallen soldier. So what are you doing? Click it now.